Ground safety is a very important part of airline operations. It should be considered as important as on-time performance and flight safety. In order to ensure safe ground operations, all ramp agents must comply with safety rules and follow standard operating procedures. All ramp agents should carefully study, understand, and follow these rules during ground handling operations. The loading supervisor briefs handling highlights to his ground staff before flight arrival. The ramp agents and ground surface equipment should be ready at least 15 minutes prior to the estimated time of aircraft arrival. Ramp agents include maintenance workers, the marshaller, two wing walkers, and any other ramp agents who will be working on the flight. Ground service equipment includes the ground power unit, cargo lift loader, belt loader, towing tractor, dollies, and other equipment, which should be positioned behind the safety line with parking brakes set. As well, the cabin supply truck and any ladders are to be positioned behind the safety line. The tires of the jetway must be in the designated box and parked behind the safety line in order to ensure that they are clear of the aircraft engine as it approaches the bay. Adjust the cargo lift loader wing and guides according to aircraft type. Check the platform side guides, rear guide, check the platform side guides, platform operation, and the bridge rear guide are normal. Ensuring normal operation prevents pallets or containers falling from the loader onto the ground. Prior to aircraft arrival, ramp agents will check the parking area for FOD. They will walk along the edges of the parking bay toward the traffic lane. After arriving at the traffic lane, turn toward the parking bay center line and then search the area where the aircraft's engines will pass over. Any FOD must be put into the FOD can. Keeping the parking area FOD free is important as it may be ingested by the engines or pierce the tires. Highlights of ULD serviceability standards. Walk around and inspect the ULD. Check the tightness of the cargo net for each pallet. While facing the longer side of each cargo pallet, pull its net tight to check the net clearance from the cargo. For tall pallets, this distance must not be greater than 20 centimeters. For low pallets, this distance must not be greater than 15 centimeters. This is to prevent falling cargo or tilting cargo pallets from damaging the aircraft's sidewall, which can result from excessively loose cargo nets. There shall be no broken or missing corners. There shall be no more than five loose or missing rivets per edge rail. The minimum distance between loose or missing rivets is 50 centimeters. There shall be no loose or missing restraint slot brackets on the PGA or PRA. The length of a cut or the diagonal length of a hole shall not exceed 20 centimeters. There shall be no cuts or holes closer than 5 centimeters from any rivet. Cuts or holes in the fabric should not exceed 10 centimeters in length. Missing fastening latches should be replaced. No more than 10% of the rivets on one panel shall be loose or missing. The minimum distance between loose or missing rivets is 12.5 centimeters. Technical standard order tag. There shall be no missing TSO placards. The text of the TSO placard must be readable. Inspection of special cargo. 
Identify if there are dangerous goods from the loading instruction form. Check the condition of the ULD to ensure that it is acceptable and make sure that there is a dangerous goods identification tag on it. The loading position in the aircraft must be written on the DG identification tag, which should then be signed. The same must be done on the NOTOC form. When loading VUN cargo, check to ensure that its condition is acceptable or not. Six pictures should be taken, including the front, rear, left, and right sides, as well as the ULD number and the aircraft loading location. When loading special cargo that could leak, such as perishable, live seafood, or other wet cargo, check for any spillage and lay down dew paper. Complete and sign the no-talk. When loading pets in the bulk area, lay pea sheet and dew paper and then tie down the container. Complete and sign the no-talk. When loading pets in the Boeing 747 bulk cargo area, always remember to adjust the temperature to high. As the aircraft is approaching to turn into the bay, the two wing walkers using approved wands will perform traffic control to prevent vehicles crossing between the aircraft and the marshaller. As the marshaller guides the aircraft into the bay, No vehicles are allowed to use the traffic lane in front of or behind the aircraft until the aircraft has stopped. After the aircraft has stopped at its parking position, nose gear chocks are put into place first. Once the beacon has been turned off, all engines have been shut down and the headset man has given the OK signal Ground service equipment are allowed to approach the aircraft. As well, the OK signal means that ramp agents can put the main gear chocks and safety cones in place. Safety cones are located at designated positions, which are in front of the engine, on the outer side of each engine. Behind each engine. As well, place a safety cone under each wingtip. Each engine safety cone is to be a distance of one meter from the engine. There must be at least three safety cones per engine. Before opening any cargo door, you should check its appearance. If any irregularity is noted, please notify EVA staff immediately. When opening a cargo door, ensure that it will not make contact with any obstacles. As the jetway is approaching the aircraft, the operator should check for any damage nearby the cabin door. Approach the cabin door slowly. Once again, verify that there are no irregularities near the cabin door prior to opening it. When the belt loader is approaching the aircraft, a guide must be used. Prior to approaching the aircraft, the driver of the belt loader must carry out a brake check when further than 8 meters away from the aircraft. Then approach the aircraft at a walking pace 
in order to reduce the risk of hitting and damaging the aircraft. Check for any irregularities around the bulk cargo door prior to opening it. When the cargo lift loader is approaching the aircraft, a guide must be used. Prior to approaching the aircraft, the driver of the cargo lift loader must carry out a brake check when further than 8 meters away from the aircraft. Then approach the aircraft at a walking pace. Again, check for any irregularities around the cargo door prior to opening it. When the cabin supply truck is approaching the aircraft, a guide must be used. Prior to approaching the aircraft, the driver of the cabin supply truck must carry out a brake check when further than 8 meters away from the aircraft. Then approach the aircraft at a walking pace. Once again, check for any irregularities around the door prior to opening. When backing away from the aircraft, a guide must be used. When the fuel truck is backing away from the aircraft, a guide must also be used. This prevents any accident due to restricted visibility. The ramp is a fast-paced and congested work area. Various types of vehicles can be operating around the aircraft at the same time. The SOP for any vehicle's path must be strictly observed. It is prohibited to drive under the wings of the aircraft. It is also prohibited to drive under the fuselage in order to prevent colliding with the aircraft. Except for a maintenance or fuel truck, no vehicles are allowed to operate under the wings or fuselage in order to ensure aircraft safety. Always check for people in the area before moving or offloading dollies. In order to prevent injuries, it is prohibited for a person to walk across dollies. The gap between the dolly and the cargo lift loader must be between 15 and 20 centimeters. The gap between the dolly and the cargo lift loader must be between 15 and 20 centimeters. For transferring containers or pallets from the loader to the dollies, check that the outside locks on all the dollies are engaged in the up position. After each container is loaded on the dolly, make sure that the locks on the other side are up. Prior to driving away, once again ensure that all dolly locks are engaged. Ground staff must not cross the path of a towing tractor. The dolly handbrakes should be engaged when they are parked. When leaving the belt loader unattended, the operator should lower the conveyor belt and turn off the engine.
When leaving the cargo lift loader unattended, the operator should lower the platform and turn off the engine. Before loading the aircraft, lower all the cargo locks to avoid damaging them during the loading process. The ULD number on the loading instruction form must match the actual loading position on the aircraft. If the ULD is loaded in a different position on the aircraft, the load controller must be notified immediately. This is to prevent an incorrect cargo loading position which could lead to aircraft center of gravity deviation and thus compromise aircraft safety. Once a pallet or container is loaded into position, lift the cargo locks and make sure they are securely engaged. All cargo locks shall be raised even if no container is in that position. When loading is complete, make sure all door cargo locks are up and then take a photo for reference. When finished loading, the operator of the cargo lift loader should check the door frame and seal for any irregularities. After this check is complete, lower the platform and close the cargo door. To prevent FOD from the cargo loading process damaging the aircraft, once cargo loading is complete, the ground handling agents will conduct another FOD check to ensure flight safety. To ensure that the wing walker can communicate with the tractor driver in a timely manner, certain communication signals should be used. During a pushback in daytime, if the wing walker wants to signal the tractor driver to make an emergency stop, he will cross his wands above his head. At night, use one wand to make a circular motion above the head as a warning to stop the pushback. When all loading is complete and all cargo doors are closed, the safety cones can be removed. When to remove the gear chocks. Make sure the pushback tractor and tow bar are connected to the aircraft prior to removing the main gear chocks. Nose gear chocks can be removed once the jetway is clear of the aircraft. After the jetway has been removed, the following should be checked. Check the cabin door area and make sure the door is properly closed with its handle correctly stowed. Check for any irregularities in the cabin door area such as scratches or collision damage. EVA Air's Safety Vision Safety is more than a slogan. It is a core value for our company. We have zero tolerance for negligence and risk. When 
flying with EVA Air, safety is assured. Because when it comes to safety, we will never compromise. Safety Guidelines Use good moral principles and develop team spirit consisting of accuracy, diligence, consistency and innovation. We have to do things right the first time and aim for the greatest safety margin in order to ensure passenger, crew and aircraft safety.